The Nuubans, Nubans, or Nuwapians come from Nuba, Nuba, a country in southern Sudan which included Ethiopia originally called Aksum, Aksum, Uganda, and Kenya. They are the original nine ether woolly-haired beings, descendants of the Anunnaki. In the Nuubans language, Nuba is said to mean gold, this is in reference to the gold that was put under their feet. This gold can be traced in Genesis 2.12, where it says that the gold in that land was good. The word being used is Zaab, Zahab, not Nub. There are many different words for gold in the dialects of Noah's seed. They are Bazar, Ka Ruz, Ka Tham, Sugar, Faz and Zahab. As you can see, Nub is not one of them. The word Nub or Nui WB is the root word of Nabi, Nubians, or Nuwapians. It means color inclining to black, in reference to the Nuubans, the kinky, woolly-haired people. When you look up the language of Nuuba, you will see that it takes you back to a kind of the Kushite dialect, which also includes the Hamites, the Putites, and the Misriamites who are descendants of Noah and his sons. The original Nuubans migrated from the Persian Gulf up into Sumer and set up seven kingdoms, 1, Tilmun, 2, Salam, 3, Mu, 4, Lumeria 5, Kodesh 6, Nippur 7, Ashkolan, Alkabu Lan. Some stayed, while others migrated west to Egypt and set up seven more kingdoms, 1, Sipper, 2, Kish, 3, Kutha, 4, Shurupak, 5, Uruk, 6, Ishin and 7, Eridu. Kish became Kush in the Bible. After Noah's time, Phut took over Libya, Kush took over Ethiopia and Sudan, and Mizraim took over Egypt. They also migrated over here to America and settled in what was then known as the Land of the Frogs, Algonquia. The Olmecs are the original woolly-haired, dark olive-toned people, who originally came from Nuba of South and Central Africa. They walked over to America before the continental drift. The name Olmec was given to them by their children, the Aztecs, many years after they migrated to America. The word Olmec means people of the rubber land. However, their original name is Nuubans, from the word Nui WB, Nub. Most historians say that they don't know the origin of the Olmecs, while some historians claim that the Olmecs existed in America during the pre-Columbian era. The Nuubans were called Olmecs, dweller of the rubber land, by the Aztecs because when they migrated to America they brought along with them the rubber trees. They uprooted these trees and planted them here in America. As mentioned earlier, the Nuubans walked over to America from Africa before the continental drift, and became known as rubber people. This is why when the Europeans came over, they saw that the natives were playing games with a bouncing ball made of rubber. The rubber was extracted from trees that the natives called cow uchu, a word meaning weeping wood for the oozing fluid coming out of the trees. This fluid was systematically cultivated in pre-Columbian America, which is when the Olmec civilization existed. The Europeans took pieces of the gummy material back to Europe and tried to duplicate the water-resistant products such as shoes, coats, and capes of the native South Americans. However, they were unsuccessful. The rubber samples that were brought back to Europe became merely a museum piece for the next two centuries. Rubber trees can be found in Central and South America, but mainly in Brazil, along the Amazon Valley. Natural rubber trees can also be found in Central African countries, Liberia, Nigeria, and Zaire. Today, rubber is produced from a wide variety of plants, especially Hevia brazilianus, a tall softwood tree native to Brazil, but also from species of Mabia, Manahat, Sapium, Ficus and others. Rubber is also produced from latex, which is produced from gum trees. These gum trees can only be found in Africa. This gum is called Arabic gum. It comes from a species of plant called acacia. The finest quality of Arabic gum is found in acacia, Senegal from which this gum got its name. A fine quality of gum known as Arabic, is also found in the northwestern countries of Africa. One of these countries is Mali, which was just one of the countries that made up the Malian kingdom where Abubakari II also known as Bubakari or Bogari, and Mansa Musa ruled before sailing on the African tides over to the shores of America. Pre-Columbian era simply means before Columbus. This time period is any time before the 1600s. It covers the time span from 1500 BC, to 1540 AD. This era is divided into three periods, the first being pre-classic or formative which dates from 1500 BC, to 300 AD, the second being the classic or fluorescent period which dates 300 AD to 900 AD, and the third is the post-classic, which dates from 900 AD, to 1540 AD. Columbus was not the first person to come on land. The first person to come on land was a Moor of the ancient Shriner Brotherhood named Pietro el Negro or Negrito. Pietro el Negro was the admiral, meaning a high commander, and the head navigator of one of Columbus's ships, called the Nina. 
There are two things you should bear in mind. 1. The ancient Shriner Brotherhood were known navigators who charted the deserts as well as the seas. 2. This word Nina has its root Nin, in the ancient Egyptian way of saying noble for females, which all of our crafts were named after. There was a Nubian king found on the shores that greeted him. All of this can be found in the Columbus logs, but they will never reveal this information to you because it would be going against their story, that a pale man discovered America. The statement that Christopher Columbus discovered America was coined because it is said that he led the way for the European explorers. The real truth is Diego Columbus and Christopher Columbus would have starved if it weren't for Pietro el Negrito, Negro, who fed them. It was also this same Pietro de Negro who was with Columbus when he went to ask Queen Isabella to support his trip. He had with him spear heads made with a combination of four different metals, gold, silver, copper and brass. These spears ignited the Queen's interest. After which considering the possible wealth to gain, she decided to support Columbus' trip. Make note that when Columbus came to the Indies, he encountered the rulers with the same spear tips as the ones of the Mandingo tribe given by Pietro de Negro, who were a tribe of Malians. They came over to America years before Columbus. Make note that the first tribe of Native Americans that Columbus encountered were the Arawak. Columbus' voyage was a religious voyage. He came here with the intent of converting the Native Americans to Christianity. If you look at the meaning of his name Christopher, which according to the Comprehensive Etymological Dictionary of the English Language, Christopher is from the Ecclesiastical Latin Christo and Forus. Christo from Christ and Forus to for from the Greek Foros, which means bearing, from in, meaning to carry. So Columbus was a Catholic Christian. Just look at his first name, Christopher. Christopher in Greek means bearing Christ. Columbus sailed to America on behalf of the Roman Catholic Queen Isabella of Spain. The fact of the matter is Columbus had to go around the country begging for people to finance his trip. The King of Portugal, from where he is from, would not support him, but rather stole his idea and sailed himself. Columbus then went to the Jews, the Sephardim Moors and then back and introduced himself to Isabella, who did finance his trip. So this country was invaded by Catholic first, which makes all other forms of Christianity cults. This is why the religions don't have to pay taxes, they can become tax exempt. They are compared to an indigenous nation because religion came here before the government was set up for you. The laws of the state do not apply to them, like an embassy. And a church is a sanctuary for its registered members. They converted some of the natives and then set up a corporation. This corporation was with the states, or settlers that came later. The word corporate is from the Latin corpitus, past participle of corpore, meaning to make into a body, from corpus, meaning body. The phonetics of the word corporate, is very similar to the word cooperation, which means the association of persons or businesses for common, usually economic, benefit. It comes from the prefix co, or com, which means together, jointly, and operation, which comes from operate, from the Latin opera, operat, from opera, meaning work. So the corporate government came after the religious corporation, and these religious corporations are treated as an indigenous nation. The states and the religious churches are two separate parties, and even though the church and state are separate, they were and still are working together. Some modern historians say that the first inhabitants of America were the Black Australoid, who dates 38,000 years ago. However, let me bring this to your attention. If you take the word Australoid, and break it in half, as a compound, you get the word Australoid, the Austra, meaning, someone, or things, that lives, or inhabits Australia. This is what they want you to believe, that the indigenous people were aboriginals, who live in Australia. However, there is no way aboriginals can be indigenous people, because they have blonde hair, a sign of a regressive gene. Their features on the other hand stems from New Guinea origin, from Africa, but the blonde straight hair trait is a regressive gene. The Olmecs had woolly, or nappy hair, and they would braid their hair. Australians don't have flat follicles, their hair follicles or the follicle of people with straight or six ether hair has an anchor or curl at the root, it grows out at a slant and lies flat on the surface of their skin. The follicles of woolly, or nine ether hair, is flat and grows out to form a tight curl. The hair is the key. It's simple and clear, as in the case of a baby. Babies are born with straight or curly hair, and as they mature their genes get stronger and their hair thickens. So the Australoid couldn't have been the indigenous people of America, unless you are telling me that apes sailed over here, or walked over to America, or are you admitting that Australia was once a part of Africa? Other historians believe that the diminutive blacks migrated here from Africa as Homo sapiens. The word diminutive means extremely small in size, tiny. As you can tell, it comes from the word diminish from the Middle English diminution, which means blend of diminuen, meaning to lessen from Old French diminuer, from the Latin minuere, variant of minuere, minuere, to lessen and minution, 
to reduce from the old French minuser, from vulgar Latin mintire, from Latin mintia, smallness, from mintus, small, from past participle of minuere, to lessen. So diminutive blacks mean small blacks in reference to one of their characteristics, which are, a, unusually short stature, b, skin complexions that range from yellowish to dark brown, c, tightly curly hair, and d, big buttocks. Other names for these diminutive blacks are, pygmies, negritos, negrilos, grimaldis, ita, kekai, orang osli, samang, twa, black dwarfs, koi koi, hottentots, san, bushmen, kung, seed people, little black men, and little red men. Notice the names given, one, pygmy, comes from the Middle English pygmy, from the Latin pygmy, the pygmies, from Greek pygmaeoi, from pew meaning cubit or fist. The word cubit means an ancient unit of linear measure, originally equal to the length of the forearm from the tip of the middle finger to the elbow, or about 17 to 22 inches, 43 to 56 centimeters. It comes from the Middle English cubit, from the Latin cubitum, meaning cubit, elbow, so this name pygmy is in reference to their size. Yet, note the phonics of this word, pig, which when researched, they claim has no origin. However, the word pigment, which obviously shares the same root, comes from the Middle English meaning spice, red dye from Latin pigmentum, from finger, which means to paint so the pig, and pygmy were named for their pigments. In case of the pig, it has a lack of it. 2. Negritos, is a Spanish derivative of the word negro coming from Spanish and Portuguese negro meaning black, black person from the Latin Niger meaning black. 3. The word bushman was applied to these people in reference to their present dwelling place. The jungle or the bushes. 4. Seed people comes from the fact that these people are the seed of this planet. They were indigenous to this planet. 5. Little black man as you can tell takes you back to the first word pygmy, the word little in reference to their size, and black men in reference to their pigmentation. Whatever these people were called, it is a confirmed fact that they are at the base of every nationality on this planet. An early fossil of their structure was found in Africa at Orno in Ethiopia, a border cave in South Africa and at Clissy's River Mouth in South Africa. They are the Homo sapien, that according to Jim Wainscote of Oxford a founder population left Africa and spread throughout Europe, Asia and the Americas. These pygmies are not the Olmecs because the Olmecs do not fit in the size brackets of these pygmies. Lucy who was exactly 4 feet would be considered a pygmy, height criteria less than 5 feet, and a dwarf, height criteria less than 4 foot 2 inches, however, the Olmecs were taller. There was an extraterrestrial intervention of very tall beings, who according to your Bible came down and mixed in on two different occasions with these pygmies, or indigenous people as found in Genesis 6 1 and 6 4. These tall beings, were called giants, which translates in Aramaic Hebrew as Nephilims. This would account for the different height of humans. However, if you want to say you don't believe in the Bible, there was archaeological findings of extremely tall beings. You already admit that the original human being was less than 5 feet, then where did these tall beings come from? According to the historian Ivan Van Sertima and others, the Olmecs were a mixture of three people. 1. Mongoloid 2, Negroid and 3, Caucasoids. This is not totally incorrect, it's in the wrong order. The black germ, or seed would come before the brown, yellow or red seed. The Negroid or the Olmecs as the Aztecs called them, because of their homeland, which was Nuba, would come first because the dominant, progressive, gene, the black seed, would come before the two regressive races on this list, the red and yellow seed. The Aztecs called the Olmecs rubber people because they manufactured rubber from Nuba, a country in South Africa. Rubber is found in Africa, where the Olmec migrated from as Nuubuns in Central and South America, which is where they migrated to and became dwellers of the rubber land. The Nuubuns, originally came here millions of years ago, before the continental drift, and set up colonies. They were dark-skinned, woolly-haired people, with big lips, wide noses, etc., known in Egyptian science as the Nasi, Nasu. Then the Hexians, under Shu Shen, of the Shang dynasty, the Yellow Seed, or in Egyptian science as the Nainu, came here and they mixed in with the Nuubuns, and they produced the Mexians, also called Aztecian, the brown seed, the colored man known as the Hainu in Egyptian science, and from the brown seed or the Hainu, came the Tama who were the Caucasian, the red seed, from where you get red neck, or the pale race, the results were also the Aborigines, a mixture of all four. In Egyptian Tama means people and created, who is white, light, ivory. The Tama who are the created white people. Na is black, ink, Ne is a blackbird, and Su is the person or birth. So the Nasi, or Nasu is one black born, or an Egyptian phrase black from the egg, Su. Hem is the rudder, to paddle fish, Hemi to steer. 
So the Hamu or Hemu were the sailors, seafarers, the people of the isles. You can find the pictures of these different races as seen on the temple walls of the pharaoh Seti I. The original Nuubuns are your ancestors, children of the Anunnaki, Elohim. However, through the mixing and breeding of different tribes, you have lost your original black seed from these Nuubuns, and now you have lost your gift. The only way we can rid the curse seed out of our system is by stop mixing in with other races, and produce with only those of our seed. This is the same order of genetic seeds that the Egyptians used when dealing with the graftation of the Tamahu. The Nasi the blue black man was the first original seed, the Nuubuns. The Hamu the brown seed was first Nazi. Isn't that racism? No, it's respecting the system of genetics of which the Most High Li has planned. No other animals on earth violates this law. I did not say we should dislike each other. Original man, Nuubuns, also known as Olmec, Nasi, Black Seed, Asiatic, Chinese Mongoloid, Shushen Hexian, Namu, Yellow Seed, Mexians, Aztecs and the likes, Native Americans Aboriginals, Hamu, Brown Seed, Caucasian, Tamahu, Mankind Suboriginals, Red Seed or Pale Race, Binu, Colorless Ghost. Information on the discovery of the Olmec head statues in 1862 AD, were not used outside of Mexico, because of persuasive facts showing all Olmec heads found were of African type. There are faces which weigh 25 tons in La Venta, which have archaeologists puzzled as to how it was done, when there were no stones in La Venta. These stone faces dated way back to 200 years BC, before Christ. The Olmec Nubian heads found at La Venta were priests. They were the elite amongst the Olmecs. One of the stone heads has a flat top for an altar, where people worshipped. At the back of the heads behind the ear is a hole that leads to the mouth where the priest could stand behind the ear, and be heard through the mouth to the people. It was set up as an oracle. There are markings that eroded away from the top of the helmet. The wearing of helmets will be explained later in this chapter. Stone heads found at La Venta were African, terracottas, and African skeleton types, that dated back to 948 to 680 BC, the stone heads stood 8 feet high, like the ones at Trace Zappos. Two of the heads found at La Venta had their teeth carved out, which is an African trait, not American. The lines of their cheek and jaw, the fullness of their lips, the broad fleshy noses, the acutely observed and duplicated facial contours and other similarities, were of Nubian descent. One of the Nubian stone heads stood 8 feet high, 6 inches and 22 feet in circumference, had earplugs in each ear with a cross carved in each earplug. Make note that this cross is not the cross of the Christians. This cross was the same as an Egyptian cross, which symbolized fertility, and the key of everlasting life. The Mexican word for cross, which appears in Teotihuacan is Tanakakwawitl, meaning tree of life. This cross is really an ank, which we use today, as the key to everlasting life. This is just another tie between the Egyptians and the Olmecs. There was also a statue found at Veracruz, of a smiling man, and he also wore an ank. The helmets as mentioned before of the Olmecs are similar to the leather helmets worn by the Egyptian Nubian army in the time of the Remesids, Egyptian pharaohs. In the first 1000 years BC, these helmets completely covered the head and the back of the neck, they have tie-ons attached to the figure and falling in front of the ears. You are taught that the word pharaoh means great house from the Latin word phara from the Greek word pharao and from the Hebrew word paro, also from the Egyptian paro. Par meaning house and o meaning great. However, this word comes from the word pharaoh, which came from the root word far. The word pharaoh comes from the Latin word pharos and from the Greek pharos, meaning lighthouse. Pharos is a former island in the Bay of Alexandria, Egypt, famous in ancient times for its lighthouse. The Metaphysical Bible Dictionary defines Pharaoh as the sun, Pharaoh's being in Egypt shows us that the light of the sun of righteousness is veiled by our life on the lower or sense plane. So the word Pharaoh does not mean great house, it means lighthouse. Even the Muslims translates their word Pharaoh in the Quran 249 it's wrong. It comes from the Persian Furan, meaning king, potentate. This is just to show you that the Olmecs who were constructing pyramids just like the Egyptian pyramids, were of Egyptian descent. The questions that puzzle many is, how did the Egyptians carry massive stones across the sands, and how did the Olmecs carry their stones from Tuxla 60 miles to La Venta to build their pyramids? A mounded earthen pyramid was also built about 100 feet high in La Venta. This was the center for many temples and plazas built by the Olmecs. The Egyptian pyramids are four triangular sides that meet at a point at the top, while the New World pyramids are four-sided, flat-topped polyhedrons, only because the top was cut off. Both the Egyptian and the American structures are called pyramids. Many people have erroneously assumed that the Egyptians influenced the rise of civilization in the New World. 
the Egyptian pyramids were built from about 2700 BC, to about 1000 BC, and in Americas, mound construction continued from 1200 BC, until the Spanish conquest in 1519 AD. Even though the Egyptian pyramids are different from the American pyramids in their shape, they have some similarity in their use. The Egyptian pyramids served as royal tombs, and recent excavations indicate that tombs in the Americas were sometimes made into pyramids as well. The American pyramids were also used for military defense and served as platforms for temples and palaces. To build a pyramid, you have to know the circumference of the earth and build the units of measurement that came out of the sky. To build the base of the pyramid, you need to know the astronomical knowledge, which is the same method that the Egyptians used to build their pyramids. The pyramids in Mesoamerica are placed on the north-south axis just as the pyramids attributed to Khufu, Khafra, and Menkur of Egypt, which are aligned with Orion's belt, and Nubia. Step pyramids, such as the pyramid at Saqqara, was built by Imhotep, but Djoser or Zoser took credit for it. The pyramid of Madame, built for Sneferu, was also found in America. The step pyramids are also the same as the ziggurats of the Babylonians. A ziggurat is a temple tower of the ancient Sumerians, Assyrians and Babylonians, having the form of a terraced pyramid of successively receding stories. In Assyrian, it is called ziggiratu, meaning summit, and the word summit comes from Middle English summit, from Old French summert, diminutive of som, top, from Latin summum, from neuter of summits, meaning highest. Thus a ziggurat is a high building, which is obvious by the story of the Tower of Babel as mentioned in the Bible in Genesis 11 1-9, where the Babylonians built a summit, meaning highest tower under the rulership of Nimrod, to try to reach to the heavens. The name Babel within itself means Bab door to El, simply doorway to El. They are the Pyramid of Cholula, dedicated to the Pyramid of the Sun at Teotihuacan near Mexico City, the Cerro Colorado Pyramid in the Chiacama Valley in northern Peru. The Pyramid of Teotihuacan near Mexico City has a pyramidal base almost identical in proportion to that of the base of the Great Pyramid at Giza. Teotihuacan Pyramid measures 225 meters square and the Pyramid at Giza measures 226.5 meters square. But the first American step or stepped pyramid built, was in La Venta by the Olmecs. The design of the Babylonian ziggurat, Egyptian pyramids and American pyramids are identical. It is sunstar oriented and encircled by a precinct. Not only are the religious functions the same, but the astronomical and spatial, space, are the same. The Egyptians, Native Americans, and the Nubians aligned all their religious structures on earth to cardinal points in the heavens. The last group of people who built Egyptian-type pyramids after the Egyptians were the Nuubuns of Nubia. The first period of American pyramid overlapped the last stage of Egyptian Nubian pyramids being built. The Nuubuns built the last of the steppe temples for sun worship. Throughout history the Nuubuns of Nuuba were recorded in history as also being warriors for the Egyptians. Pianki, 751-716 BC, the son of Kushta, rebuilt the great temple of Amman, which was originally built by the Egyptian pharaohs Thutmosis III and IV, with additions by Ramesses II. Pianki also ordered a pyramid built for his burial. After his death, other members of his royal family were also buried in pyramids, and this practice continued for 400 years at Napata. Pianki's pyramid was built over a burial chamber, and a corbelled arch formed the ceiling of the pyramid, which the same procedure was used in many of the Mesoamerican pyramids. Taharka, son of Pianki, also built a colonnade in the Great Temple at Karnak. One of these columns is still standing up. Taharka also restored the halls of hypostyle columns in the Great Temple of Ain and Ray at Jabal Barkal. The hypostyle or forest of columns also appears in America. Taharka built his pyramid at Nuri, on the other side of the Nile. The pyramids built in America are called temple mounds or platform mounds by archaeologists. There are 400 temples in the jungles of Mexico. There are many similarities between the Olmecs and the Nuubuns from Egypt, from the similar dress of the priesthood, the great earrings on their ears, their beards as an index, and also the use of the color purple. The Chacanil, which is said to be the color red, is equivalent to the Mediterranean murex shell purple. All the temples are made from the color purple. The stone heads were even purple. Proof of this is seen from a patch of purple found on one of the Olmec stone heads, but erosion caused the color to fade away. This color purple was used by the Egyptians, as a color of royalty. The color purple to the Egyptians is as an emblem of the powers of their supreme beings. Before the murex shell reaches the color purple, it goes through a series of tints which were like that of the Nile in the flood. Many people think that water is colorless, however, water goes through many color changes. Blue, yellow, red, green, brown, silver and black, and after thunderstorms, you can find every color of the rainbow on the water. 
It is because of this that we can make a connection between the color in Murex shell with the color scheme from a yellowish cream to green, then blue like the Nile during the flood. The Murex shell is identical to them borrowing a tint or two that concluded that the color purple was sacred, because the Nile was sacred to the Egyptians. And make note that the color purple was a movie, which dealt with the period after slavery in America. The Europeans took the concept of wearing the color purple from the Egyptians. As mentioned before, they came into contact with the Egyptian Nubians, for King Taharqa was mentioned in their chronicles. The Phoenicians were sea merchants working along the Mediterranean exchanging the color purple. They call it Tyrian purple, which became famous in the Mediterranean. Only the high nobles wore the color purple, for the cost of purple was so high. Not to mention that the word Phoenician means purple, from the Middle English word Phoenician, from Middle French word Phoenician from Latin Phoenus and from the Greek meaning land of purple. The word Phoenix is also related to this word, which comes from Middle English Phoenix, from Old French, from Latin Phoenix, and from Greek meaning purple, crimson. Another similarity between the Olmecs and the Egyptians is the use of the same kind of hunting dog called the Basenji, which is odorless and barkless. This Basenji dog was found by Columbus when he arrived here in the Caribbeans, which he reported in his journals, as seeing a barkless dog. There was a Basenji toy found in Vera Cruz, in Mesoamerica. The only surviving species of this Basenji dog is found amongst the pygmies of a Turi forest, which they used to track down and chase game. The double crown of Lower and Upper Egypt with the bird and the serpent, is also found in Olmec culture with a double crown representing the two lands, a serpent and a feathered serpent. The king plum serpent motifs of the Egyptians are also the same used by the Olmecs, and even the Mexicans today. The relation of the sun and its movement around the planet Earth, mathematically and astronomically were related to that used by the Egyptians. All of these things were carried over. The Mexicans have four calendars. Out of three calendars, the fourth calendar is identical to an Egyptian calendar, which days equal 365.25. The Mexicans have their own counting system and mathematic system. In the heart of the Olmec, there is found a paper made from the wood pulp that is only found in Egypt. The Olmec agriculture system was the same as the Egyptian system. The Egyptians worked off of a hydraulic system because of the flooding from the Nile, and the Olmec lived in a swampy area, where you find the same flooding problem. In the Chanchan city in Peru, you will see a terrace agriculture system as that of the Egyptians. According to Mysteries of the Ancient Americas, by Reader's Digest, on page 274, it says hydraulic engineering developed so rapidly in the area that by about 1000 AD, Chimu engineers were making use of concepts not discovered by Western scientists until a century ago. So from the above statement, it is showing you that the Olmecs and the Egyptians had hydraulic systems way before the Europeans. There are also signs of hieroglyphics found in Mexico, and when you compare a seal on a cylindrical artifact dated at 600 BC, it is the same as a symbol used in an Egyptian script. I could go on and on, even if one culture influenced another, there are just too many cultural things with hardly any variation that match up unless they are the same people. It is very important that you look at this listing with an open mind. So you will be able to see the clear proof as it is right in front of your eyes. The boat made from papyrus reeds used by the Egyptians are found used in Central and South America today. This same reed boat was used by some of the Nuubans who sailed across the Atlantic Ocean. Many didn't think this was possible, however, if you look in the National Geographic, it tells that in 1969 AD, the Buduma people built a boat of papyrus reeds and it reached as far as Barbados before it sank, which proves Africans did of sea-going crafts, did explore the oceans and were not limited to just lakes and rivers. This boat built by the Baduina people in 1969 AD, set out from Safi in North Africa and crossed the Atlantic Ocean to Barbados, a distance of 1,500 miles.